Welcome back. Um, it's Mr. Bruce here. Not feeling too well, nose is stuffed up. Hope I don't sneeze. This is like the sixth time I've recorded this because, uh, at any rate, let's get started. I want to talk about feedback and then I want to give you this week's assignments. Um, feedback, just to let you know, I feel a little self-conscious about it because sometimes I give a little bit of feedback, sometimes I give a lot of feedback, but I want to let you know it has nothing to do with whether or not I like your answer. Sometimes there's answers I like a whole lot, but I have something I want to explain that I see maybe they could do that might make it better. And <clears throat> But the thing that I want to explain I think is complex, so I have to give a lot of feedback over this little thing. Uh, my voice cracked. Over a little thing, that way, um, that way I, I trust they understand what I'm saying. That doesn't mean that a lot of my wor means that a lot of words equals I don't like it. At the same time, if I give just a little bit of feedback, like... Um, you know, looks solid, but uh, you might want to reword it so it's clearer or something like that. That doesn't mean that I didn't care or that I don't like you as a person. It just means that I think that, that it's easy to understand my feedback, so I don't need to have a lot of words there explaining what I mean by write it clearer. That's it. So, once again, sorry. Uh, not feeling well. The whole face is itchy and stuffed up and allergies or COVID. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> probably not COVID, not running a fever. Shouldn't joke about those things. That said, <laughs> ah, uh, scientific sources. A lot of you got feedback where I said, um, could use some scientific sources. So I had people who wrote these fantastic, uh, questions this fantastic way of looking into the answer except when I look at the sources at the bottom it's like uh, there's no nothing rigorous there there's no scientists no data nobody who's doing analysis nobody who's a respectable expert doing analysis so what that means is excuse me I scratch my eye what that means is uh, I'm looking for you as the presenter to be the expert that looks at this normal thing which what most people wouldn't think twice about, and you bring in all the science into it, in addition to other sources too, but you also bring in expert opinion into the conversation. <laughs> so I'll give you, I'll give you for instance, um, I have one student who's doing uh, fame, and, and forgive me if this is you and you only talk about it, I'm not using a name here, but I have a student who looks like they're going to be doing a great job. Uh, their presentation is about fame and negative consequences of fame. Uh, in particular, so far we've talked about eating disorders and suicide of uh, famous people, which both those things are relatively high. They, they do happen, so this is worth looking into. But in the sources, all I see is like celebrity gossip style websites or articles essentially from magazines, which that's fine. Use those sources. Go right ahead. Use that stuff. However, also bring in the science, also bring in psychology or statistics about suicide or depression or eating disorders. Bring in that expert stuff as well. That's what makes this interesting is that you're taking a look at something somebody might just go, oh wow, did you hear so-and-so did this or has this problem or whatever, gossip style, and you also bring in this expert stuff. Mm, now I'm listening. Whoa, how are you connecting this together with the expert opinion? That's what makes you the expert in this situation is you don't just look at what anybody can find out by Google searching. You bring in this this uh, scientific expert stuff. Give me one second. Ah, so itchy. Like I said, I apologize. <laughs> Not feeling well. <laughs> I'm like hiding over here, blowing my nose like you can't see me. Oh well, nobody needs to see that, but you did. Because I don't have editing software that can work on these videos. Ah. <sighs> Now, let's talk about your actual uh, assignment this week. This is simple. Second answer. You're leaving the same question. You're not writing a new TOK question. You're keeping it the same. But you're going to answer it a different way than you did last week. So uh, if you answered it using um, economics and mathematics or you answered it using the human science of psychology and intuition, this week, look at it a different way reason and literature or whatever however you do it um but you need to look at it a different way so 
So let you know that's the second question. You're going to do a third one. You're going to have three different answers to your big TOK question. So for those of you who got feedback where I said looks great, but this TOK question looks too narrow. Uh, for instance, some, I had students doing things like uh, soccer and technology and how that impacts the soccer game. And I said, why limit it to soccer? Why not do soccer and athletics or soccer and performance or soccer and sport? Or excuse me, soccer. Let me re rephrase that. Why not do technology and athletics or technology and sports or technology and competition. Um, the reason why is because now you're going to have to go with a second answer. And if you did your favorite little soccer technology thing, well, now you have to do a different soccer technology thing. Well, if you broaden your question to be all of athletic competition and technology, then now you can do soccer and technology, then you can do maybe football and instant replay, and then you can do maybe baseball and why baseball doesn't use technology. They still have an umpire back there going, ah, it's in, it's out. Right, so um, that's that's why I oftentimes give feedback that says this is a great answer to that question, but it also be a great answer to a bigger question. So why not make your question bigger so that you can answer it multiple times? What this all means is you can rework your stuff. So if you're going in for your second answer and you're like, oh, I don't have anything else to say about this particular thing, this particular celebrity, this particular style of art, you know, the song. Well, then broaden your question. Make your TOK question about not just singers, but about all of art. Don't just make it about soccer. Make it all of sports if you need to. If not, then keep it as it is. But what you have to do is have a second answer. So you answered it from this direction. Now answer it from that direction. And the next week you're going to answer it from that direction. So um, have a second answer uh, that comes at it with different WOKs, different uh, T, uh, excuse me, AOKs and different um, sources, different way of answering your big TOK question. Uh, in the description below, I'm going to put what I did last week because it works for this week. Just an example of how I want it to look. Also, uh, I noticed a couple typos in my uh, example. Uh, I apologize. I'm human. Uh, I did that one last week because I was sick last week. I'm sick this week. But I'm going to copy that one over. But if you're new to this, if you're just coming into this, I get new students every week, don't use this video as your guideline. Use last week's video or even go earlier and watch up um, for what I'm expecting because all I'm saying this week is to repeat what you did last week with a new angle. That means new WOKs, new AOKs, new sources, a new way of answering that question. And know that you're going to have to do it a third time. So if you're really struggling to do it a second time, you might want to reframe your question to be even bigger. You guys, by the way, you can always change things. Even to like the day before it's due as a presentation, you can change things. Now I'm about to sneeze, so I'm going to say goodbye before I sneeze. Can't wait to see you next year. Have a good one.